Welcome back, everybody. Uh, sorry for being away for so long. I have been working on this Greeble pack here. Uh, it is my pro version of it. Uh, ha like I said, I've been working on it probably for the past couple months, off and on, and I've finally gotten it to a point where it's ready for you guys to play with and download. Uh, what's included in the pack is going to be the the new uh, tileable texture generator or the Greeble generator, uh, Greeble elements, which has been updated. Uh, I've got a bunch of sample Greeble textures that you can play with. Uh, some are displacements and some are just uh, JPEGs. Uh, I've got a few sample objects for you to play with um, that already have Greebles on them that have the textures and displacements already built into them. So all you have to do is uh, hit BPR and render it out and see what it does. And basically, um, uh, if you all are not familiar with what Greebles are, Greebles are basically uh, a phrase coined many years ago by Industrial, industrial Lights and Magic uh, that produced the first Star Wars, or Star Wars in general, yes. Um, but uh, they uh, coined uh, Greeble by all the added extra detail on their sci-fi ships and scenes and stuff like that everything you know all in the background there just the fine details just to give it a more complex look so they came up with the term greeble even though people have been greeble in a lot longer than industrialized magic were so they've been doing it for a long time in artwork and film and all that so and what this uh, generator is basically going to do for you it's going to be able to whip them out super fast, super complex, multiple different maps. Now it's all tileable. tileable. So uh, there's no seams in anything. You can't see any visible seams. So it's a great thing and it's meant for uh, ZBrush 4R7. Uh, I built it all in patch 3, which is the latest version. I believe you could probably run it on patch 2 but some of the functionality will not work on the initial 4R7 and below. So if you haven't upgraded yet, what are you waiting for? So now that I've done rambled here for a couple minutes here, uh, you can go over to the website, which is at uh, Gumroad, and you could download it from there. I will have a link in the description. Uh, so basically, without further ado, why don't we just go into ZBrush and start playing? So I am going to go ahead and load up the generator. So if you do File, Open, and I need to go find him real quick. Uh, it's going to be in a zip file, Greeble Pro Pack, and open up the Greeble generator. And it'll open up that scene, or project, or whatever you want to call it. Also in the zip file, I do have uh, my UI in there, so feel free to load that up and use that. You, it comes in quite handy for me. So, so here we are. Here is our Greeble generator. It's already got one generated on the screen. This is what it's going to look like every time you load it. And uh, the way this works is we come over to our subtools and we can see we have 11 subtools in here. Each one has a different set of greebles built into them. Uh, you've got uh, the very top one, which you're really not going to use that often, but it's very important. So don't lose track of that one and don't edit it. Okay. Uh, let me solo him out and you'll see. You'll see uh, it just says Greeble Generator Pro and it's framed up nice and neat. And the reason for this particular Greeble, not to have a title or anything like that, it's uh, it's basically our placeholder for the whole generator. Uh, if I hit, let me turn solo off, and hit frame, and we frame it out, we can see the whole Greeble that, that is out there. And it's actually nine Greebles. Okay, uh, this generator is generating nine of them. Uh, it's using a ray mesh on this bottom left corner here, and then 
projecting it all up into the other boxes. And the actual, this uh, one uh, subtool here that says Greeble Generator is actually placed right here. And let me get on the Z modeler here. There we go. Now we can see him. Now we can see where he's at. He's dead center of everything. And so he's the one that is going to frame up everything to give us tiling on both sides. Without him there, we can't center in correctly to where we need to be. So if we ever get out of alignment, so let me turn this a little bit. Okay, so now we're really out of alignment. So all you got to do is hold down shift, lock him straight on. Whoop, whoop. There we go. Let me turn solo on. So this way, and if uh, all you got to do is just make sure that the text is pointing the same direction there is pointing in the right direction and that'll help you out and then you just hit frame boom he's centered back up and you're good to go okay so with that out of the way let's go in here we can start playing with our greebles and let me just go uh, let me tell you that some of these are uh, I got the visibility turned off which uh, it, it, the only reason I did that is because we get too many greebles going on here. It's going to look too chaotic. I mean, it's already complex as it is. And I've only got one, two, three, and four, five different greebles up right now out of the 11 subtools. So you definitely don't want to have all of them going. But let me uh, hit solo here. And we're going to go through these one by one real fast. So I'm going to open up my nano mesh here and then push the down arrow to my first one here which is our panels and it's got 10 different uh, nano meshes built into it and all you have to do is just manipulate it by clicking and dragging the slider here or you got the arrows here and you click and you go through it and you can see all the different variety that are in there and if at any point you want to change it up just a little bit you just hit random seed and that's the cool thing about this generator if you just hit random seed on everything you want, it, you're going to come up with something new and unique, and you're rarely going to make anything close to a previous one. And to note, make sure you do not turn on random array. If you hit random array, it will ruin the, the, the tiling effect. So definitely keep him off. So the only ones you really want to worry about is index, your random seed, and then the Z offset to help uh, move things in and out so they're not interacting so much with each other. So continuing on, we'll just go through the indexes here real fast. And as you see, we got quite a variety here. So let me go down. And we're back in our plates here. And we're into the hex here. I've got like 12 different nano meshes in here. Quite a different variety of uh, backgrounds and stuff that you can play with. So go down. Uh, this one's a miscellaneous one. It's stuff from my old generator that I put back in. Some stuff that you might like to have. Up to you. And most of these you're going to notice that hide others is turned on. And same reason, I mean, you don't want to, I mean, it looks like a jumbled mess if I have all of them going. So I usually just keep it, I usually just limit it to one or two nanomeshes going per subtool. So I, I would definitely recommend doing that. So let's continue on. we got the conduit one here, a couple different varieties here. And like I said, each one you just hit random seed and it'll reposition them in different spots, different colors. Uh, let's see, this is just the pipes pack. There's not much to this one, just uh, hide others there. There's only three of them in there. We'll go down to uh, this one is the diamond uh, plate one. A couple different patterns there if you want like a metal diamond plate in the background there and we'll go down in the grid one here which is kinda cool a couple different uh, variety of patterns in here for you to play with 
So this one is the is the winner here. This one's going to add the most to your uh, to your greebles is these tech panels. And we'll just scroll through how many different varieties I got in here. It should be like ten of them. And they're they got quite a bit of depth to them and different uh, varieties in the depth, so that really really helps out. It really sells the the effect we're looking for. So let's see what else we got. Okay, I got the medallions. They just kind of go on the top there. Just thought it'd be kind of a cool little thing that you could put in the center of your uh, texture if you wanted to. Maybe it's a hatch or something like that. It'd be kind of cool. You know, you do this one and then do like a diamond plate background around it there. That'd be kind of cool. Like I said, make it like a little hatch, hatch uh, for something, the floor, the wall, whatever. And let's see what else. And that is it. All right. So uh, if we ta let me hit turn solo off here. Let me turn all these bad boys back on. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to generate a greeble here. And let's see. I'm going to go back to the tech panels here and find one I like. We'll just go with the index one or zero. Uh, we'll random seed him just a little bit. As you can see, it's throwing everything around, which is good. It's a good thing. We want. We don't want the same thing, same texture over and over and over. Eh. I can't ever find something that I am totally happy with. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, I'm going to turn, I'm going to change my grid here. And it, it basically, it all works on layers. Uh, I try to keep some things further in the back um, if I open up the subtools here. Basically, everything up top is furthest back. And as it goes down to the medallions, the medallions will always be up top. So that's kind of the way I set them up. You can adjust it to however you want. So let me go back to my grid here. Where's my grid? And you can always hit in and go to where you need to go. So I already did grid. Let me find my conduit. Open up Nanomesh again. And See, I think it's the last one I really like. Yeah, I'm gonna randomize him just a little bit. Let me go to my miscellaneous here. Get those guys moving around just a little bit here. And you can see how they interact a bit. Uh, let me go back to my tech panels there. I'm still not happy with them. It's all personal preference. It really is. So we'll just stick with him for now. And uh, real quick to note that uh, uh, this is a 2048 by 2048 2K texture. So And it's zoomed out to where, if I zoom in just a little bit, you'll see the line there. If I actually zoom this into actual, you'll see how big it really is. And then AA half. I've got a smaller dimensions on my monitor, so I got to zoom out just a little bit. That's why I zoomed out so much, and you can't see all the detail. So let me go to my pipes. I'm gonna turn off hide others so I can see them all now. There we go. All right, so I'm content with that. As you can tell, I mean, like I said, everything is tileable. So if you look down here, it's reflected up here. If you look over here, it's over here. This is like right on the edge, so he's barely hanging out right there. So it's going to make a seamless tile all the way around. And all we have to do right now, if you just want to get the basic textures out, is click BPR. So we'll give it a sec here to render. Alright, that took about a minute or so, depending on your system. It, it won't take long. Uh, the reason it slows down quite a bit is it's got ambient occlusion built into it. Uh, all the render settings are already set up for you, so you don't have to tinker with that. Yeah, you will have to set it up uh, if you want to do material ID and uh, bake out some special maps here. And I'll show you that here in a second. 
So, but if you want just a basic texture like this and ambient occlusion and a as well as a depth or displacement map, you're set. You're already done. All you got to do is just come over to your render tab, open up render properties, not properties, uh, BPR render pass. And as you can see, you got your shaded, you got your depth, you got an AO, you even got a mask. You don't really need it for what for our purposes. So let's go ahead and just uh, we will render him out here. I'm just gonna put in a new folder here. And I like to save everything as a TIFF. Just uh save on compression issues so load in our depth it didn't do it hold on tiff it's your personal preference uh, i like doing them as tiff they're a little larger file size but i don't have any compression issues later and if i wanted i could save out ambient occlusion and uh i've i i told you we can do uh other textures uh, you can do your material ID, you could do a, a normal pass, you could do a curve pass. Um, and if you take those and actually go to a program like Substance Painter, you can do something like this. Let me full screen him here real quick for you. There we go. And as you see, this was all out of... Well, uh, it's not all from the Greeble generator. I had to take it into a substance painter to make this, but it took all the normals, the curves, and everything and turned this flat plane into something that looks like it has depth, even though if you go on the side, it has no depth whatsoever. But it's a pretty cool little effect there that you can actually generate some materials and other programs, you know, as a uh, uh, Dedu and Substance Painter and Substance Designer. Uh, so yeah, it's a pretty cool little trick there. So let's go hop back into ZBrush here, and I will show you how to do that. See if I can do this by memory here. Uh, obviously, we need to change our render properties, and we need to turn off shadows. We need to turn off ambient occlusion. We need to turn Polyframe on click that little line off and 3D posturize set it to 180 half the time it 9 times out of 10 it'll go over to 179 for some reason but and if we do a BPR now let's see how this turns out it's basically going to take all the polyfill information of all the nanomeshes and there you go so zoom in, and as you can see, you got a nice, clean material ID to use in those programs I just told you about. And then that's basically how I did that one, that one little uh, panel. So now all you got to do, you can just do your render pass there, and then you know export out the shaded there. future tutorial I'll actually show you how to take that into Substance Painter and do all that jazz. Uh, now we need to get uh, curvature and normal. Okay, so now we gotta set up something else. Okay, our render properties are good. That's good, but our nano meshes aren't gonna work exactly the way we want them to. I'll show you. Uh, where's the nano mesh? It's open. Okay. So open up the Colorize tab and change your material real quick and change it to do 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 do. It's in your Matcap materials. No, actually it's in your standard materials. Normal RGB. Okay, as we can see, some of this is not going to work. Actually, oh, see it did snap. Okay. We can turn off 3D posturize. As you can see, some of the nano meshes do not react to the material. And so those are the ones that we have to go in and fix. So what you got to do is you got to go to 
It's uh, the tech panels. It looks like it's having trouble with. And then just hit mesh material. And boom. There we go. That's it. That's all you got to do. As you can see, it's already generating a nice normal already. And then all you got to do is hit. There we go. Actual. And as you can see, now I got a super cool normal there and relatively easily. Doesn't have to do any baking of anything, which is awesome. So let me zoom back out. So same thing, go to your render pass, zip it out, done. Now change your material to Framer 01. There we go. Uh, let's see, it looks like I got to fix the miscellaneous here. Change him to mesh material. There we go. And it looks like conduit to maybe the pipes might be having a problem. Yeah. And go to conduit, mesh material. Should have done that on the last one there, but it was kind of hard to see it. Need to turn polyfill off. Just need to do this with all of them. So basically, whichever ones are visible. And do PPR. And we'll zoom back in, and boom. That's pretty cool. Nice curvature map. It's not the best, but it it worked once I took it over to Substance Painter. It, it was pretty happy with it. It looks a lot like some of the curvatures I've done actually baking objects so I was pretty happy with it so you're you're probably asking yourself what do I do with all these textures really what purpose do they serve well let me go ahead and initialize and I'm going to show you I'm going to show you with the one that we just created we're just going to do this all inside ZBrush but you can kind of get a sense of what kind of applications you have here so polymus 3d I'm going to drag him on here T for edit and change the material to basic, a little easier to see. Frame him up. And let's go to initialize. Yeah, we'll do uh, QQ here at 2, 2, and 2. Right. Let me go ahead, deformation, unify. It always makes that cube so small. And turn the line on. Okay. We'll go into our Z modeler here. We're just going to do some crazy Z modeling. Nothing too crazy. So I'm just going to Q mesh a poly, select him, zip him out, and zip him out. Let's make some move. That's weird. Let's not do that again. And draw one here. I know. What am I making? I uh, don't really know. Just making some random objects here. So we go to your UV map. Let us go ahead and create GUV tile. I'm just going to group visible him here real quick. And let's go to surface noise and change him to UV we are going to load up all right yeah I want to find that depth one there or whatever you called it there and I want to go down here flip H I want to get rid of the basic noise I want to increase the strength do an offset of negative 0 0.001 and all that uh, offset does is it takes any of the black that was in there any of the pure black and it 
makes it transparent. So the scale right now is way too big. So let's take him down a little bit. Let's see what happens here. See what we can create here. Doesn't look like much right now. Let me turn polyfill off here. But let's run a BPR and see what happens. All right, not super duper impressive at the moment. Our projection isn't that far out. So what we could do is turn relative off. And let's click OK. And then BPR. Uh, as we can see, we're getting a little more projection out. I think I need some more... Oh, that's way too much. And let's do a color blend, too. Put in the negative color blend, and it's black. It'll add some color to everything. You just got to make sure, under Subtool, you turn the little brush on. Come up. Let's hit BPR again. Let's see what we get. Interesting. Now a lot of that scaling has got to got to do a lot of that uh, displacement has got to do with the size of the model. So what we got to do is we're gonna lower his size down. Now, granted, it won't, it shouldn't. No, well, no, it actually did. It did affect it. Good. So we can play with this a little bit more. Let's do BPR here. Cool. Now we got a lot more interesting shapes going on in here. Uh, let's go to geometry real quick. Do a dynamic subdivision. Okay. Yeah, we don't want that blob. Turn off smooth sub D, and then just increase your flat sub D, and that will make the mesh, make the displacement a little bit cleaner for us here. So zoom out, BPR. And you get some really cool shapes out of a real simple piece of geometry. And you're basically, you're letting the texture generate the geometry for you. So, you know, say like you like that, you know, you could just do apply dynamic subdivision and do a convert BPR to geo. And it's just going to do that whole BPR operation. And as you can see now, it is now a 7.5 million polygon model. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's really heavy right now. But it's really cool piece of geometry that took no time at all to make. And it gives you a... And you can decimate that model down so you don't have to worry yourself about it being too heavy. You could decimate it down to probably about oh probably about forty fifty K relatively easily and it would hold the it would hold all the geometry pretty well. Uh, the only thing is the texture unfortunately won't quite follow along but most people are gonna texture in another program anyways like I do so it's not as big of a deal. So let me load up, let me control Z back here, there we go, just save on my memory a little bit there. Let me load up uh, a couple of those tools for you, some of those objects here. So let me load up my framed cube here, he's an easy one. Same principle, he's just using a slightly different uh, texture on him, hit uh, BPR here. And it does the same exact thing to them. And there you go. So I can uh, come in here. I can shrink him down a little bit. And it should have the same, same effect. Kind of gives a little bit more of a displacement there. Uh, let's load up. Let's see who else I got in here. Let me load up. Say I like the station. The station's kind of cool. 
It was my version of a Death Star. Forgive me, it wasn't the greatest. It was qu it was just quick and easy. And wanted to demonstrate it all. And basically, let me. It's six sub tools here. You got one, two, three. Three outer shell. You got a couple deck pieces on the inside, and then you got the inner core. So let me BPR. Let me see. Show you what he looks like. And as you can see some of the visibility is opened up there because that was pure black on the texture when I generated it, I did it on purpose I didn't I left some space in there yeah just gotta wait for a second more sub tools you got with surface noise on there the longer it takes to do a displacement And there you go, as you can see, get a lot of bang for your buck. Uh, I think I just used two different textures here, one for the yeah, one for the inside guys there, and then one on the outside here. So I mean, in a relatively small package, there is hardly anything there, and you can make some really cool looking shapes real fast. So let me load up, let's see. Say like just the tube here. I mean, super simple tube with a texture on there. BPR them. And of course, at this stage. Uh, before you ever do a BPR to Geo, you could do some pretty cool things with this. So, I'm going to twist him real quick on the Y and watch the texture there. As you can see how it's twisting around there. And then, let me see if I could do this here. Just do a move topological. really distort him but that night that pretty little texture is following him along so let's see what he looks like when he's uh, when he's like this so yeah you could do some really cool things here you can get some nice fluidic shapes out of this crazy uh, sci-fi panel and so Gives you a bunch of different ideas to play with. Uh, let's see. I'll show you one more here. Load tool. I even put uh, one of my cyborgs in here. Turn her around. Zoom in. There we go. And you can see I did a lot of paneling effect up here on her skull cap here his size and then I did uh, one here on her face itself and I have a mask on here you don't see it now because I actually turned the visibility off on the mask and if you mask anything with surface noise it'll blend it into where it's not masked so it's a pretty cool little trick there so let me do a BPR on her real fast She's she looks really good here renders really well in Keyshot if you put some nice materials on her. But you can basically see how you're getting a whole lot more detail and information out of these by using these Greeble textures than what's actually there. And there you go. Look at all that detail that was just generated from a couple textures pretty cool stuff. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the Greeble Pack. I will have some more uh, tutorials in the near future on uh, make some textures and as well as applying them to models. We'll do some more modeling and using more of these Greebles on them. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, give me some feedback. Let me know. You know, if I goofed up somewhere, let me know. Or if you absolutely love it, love it let me know. 
and we will holler at you later. All right?